Now in much harder questions like this, the velocity time graph that you'll be given will be a curved graph, not a straight line graph. And in this question, we're asked to estimate the total distance travelled in the first six hours. Now remember, the area under a velocity time graph is equal to the total distance travelled. And the reason why this question is really hard is because there's no formula that we can use that can work out the area underneath a curved graph. But we don't need to work out the exact area under this velocity time graph because the question said to estimate the total distance travelled in the first six hours. So actually all we need to do is estimate the area underneath this velocity time graph up until six hours. To do this we're going to break up the area underneath this velocity time graph into triangles, trapeziums and rectangles. So the first thing that I'm going to do is break up the first part of the velocity time graph into a triangle. And this point here is a really nice point to start my triangle from. So I'm going to start my triangle from this point. So I'm going to draw a vertical line down from this point and a diagonal line from this point down to the start of the graph. Then if I look at this graph, it's a curve all the way up until here when it's a straight line. So from here onwards, it's a straight line. So I can break up the bit after this point into a rectangle. So I take my ruler and I'm going to divide this part of the graph here onwards into a rectangle. And we only want to estimate the distance traveled in the first six hours. So I only need to go to this point here, which is six hours. So I break up the last part of this graph into a rectangle because this was a straight line. And then I'm going to join this point here and the top of my triangle and I'm going to draw a diagonal line between these two points and I'm going to break up the last part of this graph into a trapezium. Now looking at these three shapes I can see that we have a really big gap between the curve and the trapezium. So this estimate for the area under the graph will not be a very good estimate because I have this really big gap here. So now I'm going to change my mind and instead of having one trapezium here in the middle I'm going to break up this area into two trapeziums to try and make it a better estimate. So now looking at my graph I need to choose a really nice point to make my first trapezium and I can see that this point here is a really nice point on the curve. So I'm going to make a trapezium from this point here to the top of my triangle and to make my last trapezium, I'll join up the top of this first trapezium with the top of the rectangle. Hopefully you can see that we've now broken up the area underneath this curve into a rectangle, two trapeziums and a triangle. And the gap between the two trapeziums and the actual curve of the velocity time graph, this gap is now much smaller which means that the area of these four shapes is a much better estimate for the area under the velocity time graph up until six hours. So now I need to use the area of a triangle formula, the area of a trapezium formula for these two shapes and the area of a rectangle formula to work out the areas of these shapes. Once you've calculated the areas of these four shapes we need to add up all of these areas and this will be an estimate for the area under the velocity time graph. Now because the area under a velocity time graph is equal to the total distance traveled, this estimate for our area is also our estimate for the total distance traveled in the first six hours. Now we need to add some units to our answer. So to find the units for the total distance traveled, we need to look at the units for the velocity. Now velocity is measured in kilometers per hour. So the distance part of these units is kilometers, which means that the distance that we've worked out here is also measured in kilometers. This is now my final answer. Now if we split up this area here into three trapeziums instead of two trapeziums, 
then we can see that the gap between the trapeziums and the curve of the graph is much smaller, which makes our estimate for the area under the graph a much better estimate. So the more trapeziums that you can split your graph into, the better your estimate will be.